Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you for attending this presentation. I think you'll find it uh, an extremely uh, interesting one, and I hope you bear with me. There's some very good news to uh, report to today. Um, recently, in fact, just literally last week, the company uh, reported that we'd now achieved a million ounce reserve, and that's going to underpin uh, a development of uh, what's going to be a very nice, um, neat, profitable uh, project in the northwest of Ghana. And uh, that project's had a lot of work done on it already, so it's pretty much what we would call primed for development. But what's even more exciting is having just delivered that and all the backup supporting numbers that go with that, um, we've actually hit some really high grade mineralisation right beneath our planned pit. So it's not too unlike what Richard's done with West Africa and uh, I'll be talking to that a bit more. But that's a very exciting development that's probably going to mean that we have to rethink uh, the project very quickly. So there's a very clear path to development with that million ounces. That sits within a two and a half million ounce uh, resource, 35% uh, uh, IRR and a very quick payback of the establishment capital. And what's very important, we've been able to reduce the capital costs and increase the reserves, so our capital intensity per ounce, which was a bit of a barrier to development before, has come down uh, by more than 50%. Uh, so some very good margins now <coughs> being uh, generated. And uh, we've never ever taken our foot off the exploration pedal. I'm going to talk to you that a bit more. There's a lot of upside just on the regional exploration. We've got 2,400 square kilometres, one of the largest land positions in West Africa of any, any company, and it's just full, absolutely full of uh, anomalies. Um, now, uh, the company Azuma, it has been very difficult, as everybody knows, uh, several, the last uh, six or seven years. Um, we, we were underfunded, so we did a, a, a deal, a farming a joint venture arrangement with a new PE group based in Perth called Ibera Capital, and that's just worked uh, wonders for us. That's come with not only funds, but importantly, some really good people. So the project now has been, the company's really transformed from an explorer to a developer. Uh, the, the Wild Gold project's been uh, completely rebased from the study that we did in uh, 2015. It didn't quite make it in, we didn't have enough reserves, but certainly now we've, we have a, a project in our pockets that's going to be developed. So we'll be treating over two grams for the first six or seven years, we're producing 100, 107,000 ounces um, per annum and all the numbers are beginning to look really good and there's lots of room for improvement on those. So our reserve has increased uh, 65%. That came from two main um, developments. First of all, by lowering all our operating costs, by uh, actually building a bigger plant, we were able to capture more reserves, so there was quite a big jump uh, just, just through that. And then also we were able to drill out um, a number of discoveries that we made several years ago and bring those into the measured and indicated and then convert them into the, to the reserves. So about 430,000 ounces added through those two processes. Right in the northwest corner of Ghana, you've just seen some presentations about Bikina. It's right in the middle of the West African Shield. Everybody knows it's one of the most fertile gold regions in the world, one of the best places to be to, to be exploring. We've got over 150 kilometres strike of very perspective uh, Brumium rocks. These are the rocks that you find all the big deposits in um, throughout West Africa. So it's a very good um, place to be and I think we've pretty much got that whole northwest corner of Ghana tied up now. We've got a 13% interest in our neighbour uh, Castle Minerals which has another 10,000 square kilometres surrounding us. We've got a board that's uh, um, all uh, structured now to look after the interests of the company as it, uh, as it moves towards development. Recently, Linton Putnam joined us, a well-known mining engineer and a uh, uh, person who's worked with PE funds, and Deborah Backer has joined us on the corporate finance uh, side. I um, just really want to emphasise we've had some really good talks from some really good companies this morning, um, but uh, Zoom has got a market capitalisation of $20 million, and that's the opportunity for investors as we um, work hard to get that company re-rated up with our peers. So the um, Ibera deal, Ibera earning directly into our Ghanaian company, so it's an incorporated joint venture. They're not taking any, any interest in Azuma at all. They're spending 11.25 million to earn a, an initial 42.5% interest. And um, what's really important is that they spent about 7 million out of that 11.25, so a bit of a way to go. 
And at the end of the day, the objective of that is to bring the project to a development decision, which we're planning to do Q3 this year. But what's really important is not just the money. The money comes with a, a real, uh, what we call the A team. These guys used to work with Andrew Forrest at FMG. They've got background in, uh, in discovery, uh, study management, and project delivery. So we've really got the people in place in the group now that can deliver uh, this project. And um, also, part of that team is Dr. John Horonsky, very well known. Um, geologist in Western Australia, just been awarded the Order of Australia and he's an expert on orogenic gold deposits, structurally hosted orogenic gold deposits which is uh, what we're looking at here and uh, his, his input into the project has, has uh, been remarkable. Cash flow profile as you can see is very very strong and we're basically we put, uh, it's an 11 year operation of which the back end is three years of uh, stockpile retreatment fully expect that as we make more discoveries and can bring more reserves into the inventory to push that right out. So nice, nice neat to start a project, but something that could um, grow uh, quite considerably from where it is uh, right now. We did a lot of work for the project in 2015 when we did our original study, so it's all there uh, ready for Ibera to dust off, and that's what they've been doing. Um, not a lot of changes to what we did then, other than it's just going to be bigger, better, and lower operating and lower um, capital costs. Right from the beginning, I knew when I got involved with this company that we we're going to be there for a long time, so we built a fantastic exploration camp, and that's now going to be the core of what will be our, our mining camp. So that's the seven years of life, and importantly, it's to, important to emphasise this um, feed grade of over two grams. The reserve grade is 1.77, but that just emphasised that that is a diluted Great. So we'll be putting through clever optimization over two grams through that plant uh, for the first six or seven years, and I've got no doubt that will uh, continue. In fact, some of the ore we'll be putting through will be uh, three grams in the early years. Metallurgy is very straightforward. 91% recovery across all our pits and all the zones in that pit. We've got some material at our Julie deposit uh, where we need to. The gold's quite fine there, so we need to. Um, find uh, to, uh, float off a concentrate and then fine grind that and then put that back into the circuit. That accounts for just 20% of our feed. That's likely to come into the schedule at the moment, it's two or three, but um, that whole area is, is evolving quite fast and um, we might review that schedule and push that down the track because if it goes very well on the exploration side, we could actually have a sep second separate project there because it's 80 kilometres away and there's quite a truck there. We'd, we'd rather not do that. All in sustaining costs, 886, it's sort of middle of where you'd, you'd expect to be a project to this side, but there's lots of opportunities um, to bring that number down. But nevertheless, with that um, uh, low capital intensity, some very good margins of 400 bucks, and uh, with 100,000 ounces, you're going to be generating 30 to 40 million free cash flow for many years to come. So lots of upside in the reserve, a lot of material trapped in the pits we couldn't call reserve, 34,800 ounces there, um, which we'll drill out and bring into the reserves pretty quickly. And there's another 156,000 ounces, which if we were optimising using our inferred resources, uh, would also be trans, um, uh, converted into reserves. The graph on the right just shows you the prospectivity of our ground. You've, we've got, you've got the right people, you've got the money, and you've got the persistence. You will just keep finding gold on this, in this area. And the two and a half uh, million ounce resource we just see as a stepping stone to much bigger numbers. So now let's just talk about the exciting developments we've had last year since the Iberia guys came in. Um, our Kunchi deposit there in the bottom left, uh, one and a half kilometres long, consistently mineralised, some really good grades there. But the guys came in and said, yeah, but where's the gold coming from? Where are the feeder structures? Let's look at those. Pretty similar to what's happened at West Africa. And did a lot of relogging, a lot of structural work, and the first hole they put down came out with that 44 metres at 5.37 grams. So we're going to be going back there and drilling that. And uh, just talking to the Ibera guys who are here with us this week, they think there's probably another two or three of these zones feeding this uh, Kunchi deposit. And as you can see, these deposits, this type of deposit, go down one or two kilometres. So we're really, really early days in um, developing that. Now, even more exciting is the Betcong deposit, where we got 93 metres at 2.33 grams uh, uh, late last year, and we've got eight holes going in there following that up right now, and we'll be putting the results out for four of them in about the next seven to ten days, and then the other four will be coming out by the end of February. So if you're a short-term investor and want a bit of a punt, it um, might be good to look at buying some shares just for that reason 
allowing. But that's looking really, really exciting. Um, we think we, uh, when you look at the core, we're definitely onto a big system. It looks, looks fantastic. And that could completely transform our thinking of the whole project. Just on the expiration, those pink areas are all our anomalies. They're our best anomalies. They're all over the place. When you drill them, you will find primary mineralization. So it's just a matter of seeing how big um, each of those become. So a lot of work ahead of us. And in particularly in the eastern area, where we've got lots of what we call abundant low-hanging fruit there, lots of areas to test. Strong foundations to boost our reserves. Tremendous team working on site. They're fantastic uh, guys to work with. We've got our mining leases in place. We've got our EPA permit almost in the bag. We don't have to relocate any villages. Lots of support, and the government's put a power line at no cost to us right up to what's going to be the mine gate. Lots of investment catalysts ahead for those who've got short-term, medium, and long-term outlooks. And you can just see where the company sits in enterprise value per ounce. You can see that there's a lot of ground to, to be regained just to be up with where our peers are and as we track towards production. So thank you very much. I think and I hope that you'll agree it's a very good time to become uh, an Azuma shareholder. Thank you very much for attending.